Hello, this is another episode of By the Numbers with me, Thorin, and that's Monte Cristo, and Alpha Draft pay all the money, so they get to be listed alongside our names. That's in many ways <laughs> the greatest gift we can give them, Monty. How are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm very well, even though we have to talk about something very sad right off the bat, which is that you actually beat me in our head-to-head. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Okay, so <laughs> let, let me do it properly, Monty. So the show starts off with uh, Monty's braggart corner, and now we will transition to that where we will show you a graphic. And it is very graphic, I've got to tell you. So, But really, this is where Monty's braggart corner actually inadvertently became Thorin's swag jar because what happened was me and Monty, as we promised we would on a, a previous show, we played a 1v1 and we actually did it on the day when Rockout played Unicorns of Love and Gravity played TSM. So two matches that, okay, in theory, they were up for grabs. Both of them could have gone either way. Well, I mean, you didn't necessarily think so at the time, but, but it turned out they both potentially could have gone either way. So me and Monty did a 1v1. There was only four teams to pick from. And actually, I won it, but here's the best part of it, okay? I actually, <laughs> you have to understand my mentality, remember, the swag jam mentality. I don't care to win by 100 points, 200 points. I'm not the kind of person who wants to rub it in someone's face and recommend. I want to win like I did here, Monty. Look at the score of the right, top right-hand corner, guys. To win by only four points. That's like nothing. That's like a few creeps. That's, it's like, that's, that's like actually a kill nothing. And yeah. Someone just dying one extra time means up. That's my favorite way to win because I like to win by the minimum possible margin, but then act as though I did something brilliant. Like, of course, you, you know, know, you tried well, but I, I didn't have the nuances of the game down like I did. Right? Just a little, it's you, a little, know, you know, the yeah. best part you picked the two fucking losing teams and you oh, still that's the won. best part, mate. No, let's just mention this, by the way. Monty's team, by the way, had like Bjergsen from TSM who won the series three to one. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had. The team who lost, I had Gravity, I had Altec, who did like okay, but didn't really go off. And then I had Hansu, who did fucking shit. He actually did actually terrible in the we series. We both had Hansu. Got, uh, he, admittedly, yeah, that matched it out. But Hansu got completely shown up. Meanwhile, I had four Rockat players. And not who only lost. that, Monty, if you remember when we were telling people about the stats, we basically told people, in general, going for like Vanda and Jankos isn't actually that good now. Their points have really dropped off. But I was like, you know what? Like I said, I, I don't go by numbers, mate. I, I just fucked it. Thought they had a chance anyway. But the real reason, obviously, why I won this one is because I had one extra Rockat Rock player, it. I think. Yeah. Yes. And, and even though Rockat lost, they had the shit show. They had the full five-game series, including okay. mega late game. Yeah, okay. But if we go to mine real quick, just to take a look at the differences between these. If we look at my team. So I have Bjergsen from the winning team. And you know what's funny about my roster, Thorin? is that I played the same roster in four different contests, and I won one every them. one yeah. except for you. <laughs> so oh, the best part I actually, is... I, I played another head-to-head -head against another guy, beat him. Then I had two 50-50s, two half-full wins, and I won in both of those. So I came out net ahead with this roster. I, I think I, I entered, entered four $10 50-50s, and then I won three of them. But Let's see. here's Who, the thing. Here's the thing. So we had the same fucking Rocket players, right? Oh, except, I had Mr. Rollis. Except I had Vardags instead of Mr. Rollis. There's your mistake right there, mate. There's your mistake the, right there. The hilarious thing is even though Vardags fucking won the series, he still got fewer points than Mr. Rollis. Rocket actually got way more points than Unicorns of Love despite losing and then I had Bjergsen, who is obviously, and Team Solo Mid, obviously much better than your uh, Alltech and Gravity. And then we both had Hanser. So when you play a 50-50, I just want to point out that in general, my method of doing it, which was to hedge a little bit, even though I thought Rocket would win, I also thought TSM would win, but I thought it would be a low-scoring game. And the reason why, however, I will say, Thorin, you did the right thing. You picked the shit show match. Because the reason why I won in so many of these half full wins was because I didn't load up on TSM and gravity players because as we discussed last week on this show, their points are shit in fantasy. So I just yeah. filled out where I had to. I mean, basically you have to realize on mine, I obviously was banking on the fact actually that gravity was going to win. And I was assuming TSM wouldn't win. Therefore I wasn't going to waste any picks on him. So I didn't know that we were going to lose that. Likewise, I thought, 
that Rock Out was going to s- smash it, you know, completely snowball it. Now, it turned out that they almost did the next best thing, which is not only losing five games, but if you remember, one of those games was even where they had to do some mad comeback where they were down yeah. fucking insanely and they still came back. So, like, per- just look at fucking Nuke Duck's creeps that we both had there, by the way. He had 2,300 creeps. Like, that's ridiculous, <laughs> mate. That doesn't even make sense. And he lost. So, yeah, this also shows you, though, that it's really hard to actually do the, well, not just a 1v1, but to do the alpha draft when it's like one play day like this, where you've got four teams to pick from. So everyone's going to be in a similar region. And then you have to try and intuit not only who's going to do well, but who's going to do well in a loss. That's a, in, a, in a way, it actually really, it, it's a lot more difficult, I found, in that sense. Yeah. Because you have to gamble like on cool someone players. at least. Also, you have to just uh, just go for the one that's going to be the shit show that is going to go to five games. Now, that was clearly out of... If you had to put odds on the five-game shit show, I mean, Rocket Unicorns of Love was overwhelmingly the one that was going to be terrible last week. So, I think we both had the read on that one, at least. Did you enter I mean, this lineup in anything else? Because you would have won just like I did, nah, like everything else. I, I didn't bad. buy anything else. I won the uh, the eight dollars that I needed, Monty. The but I will, I, I will, I will applaud yeah. your your swag, Jarsher. It was, it was, it worked out well. It's very rarely that you could pick a full lineup of losing players and still beat me. That's where the swag's at, Monty. It's like I don't even need players who win the series. I take the losers. You know, I'm like I am the Emilio Estevez. I take the, the, all the ragtag losers and I turn them into winners money in my system, okay? The flying V. So anyway, by the way, it's worth saying that one thing I think from doing these playoff competitions that I've done in general, unless you really think you can get to the two or three crazy picks that stats-wise in the past might not have been done that well and you get them at a really good value, I think one of the best ways to play the playoff ones is to do the half will wins because then you can pick people from losing teams on those as well and potentially... It might not yeah. matter, you know, because you're only trying to get I, the top half. Yeah, the half of wins are usually what I play because I find them more consistent. So, okay. Let's go and have a look because today we're going to talk about the first set of semifinals. So, day one of the semifinals is. H2K versus Origin, that's in Europe. And then afterwards, we'll have CLG versus TIP. So let's start on the first one, the European one. So just in terms of the series, Origin versus H2K. Now, H2K won convincingly over Giants. They really rinsed them out. They looked fantastic. Yeah. I don't know if you saw this stat, but fucking Kasing had a stat for the series of like 47 KDA or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played really well. So, yeah, some unreal benefits to have been gotten there. So has that changed your mind in terms of, because before you made it sound like Origin should be H2K, you know, they should be, H2Ks look shaky. Has that changed your mind going into this series? I think it has. I think, I now think that this should be a close series, but H2K should win it. That's my opinion about day one. So um, minimum if, four games. Now, however, that said, uh, a lot of the H2K players are now more expensive than the Origin players on day one. If we take a look at them, almost in every category, except for Jungler, where Amazing is higher priced. So you could get some really crazy value from the Origin players. Remember that Nails is still the second player overall in the playoffs when it comes to points while ahead. So Origin still win hard. Nails and x are way up there. But Ryu actually got a significant bump from the last best of five. So Ryu went from sort of middle of the pack mid laner in terms of fantasy points to number five overall in when it comes to players, not just mid laners. So that's that's a pretty significant edge. Hyarnan also went up significantly. He's now top ten in the playoffs. So I think H2K is going to win, but there could be some really good value in Origin here, but considering that H2K's big win, I think, pushed Origin down despite the fact that they're the higher seed coming into this. Well, here's the crazy thing, Monty, is that there's only these four teams, and yet if I hadn't shown you the stats, the two teams you would have said would have the best chance to get the crazy stats based on the regular season is CLG and Origin. Yeah, they're the cheapest yes. players in this. I know. This is like a fantasy dream. Double lift out of all players in the NA and EU LCS playoffs 
has the largest number of points while winning. So the fact that Doublelift and Niels, who are number one and number two in points while winning, are here at the lowest salary means that you could really clean up. Now that suggests, I mean, it doesn't entirely, but in a way it suggests Alpha Draft thinks that there's going to be upsets money. They think H2K is going to win. They think they Tip must. is going to win. Is there I, a reasonable chance that. for those two outcomes? I think H2K and CLG will win. So, I th of course, there is a reasonable chance. You mean Origin? I think that, oh, yes. Uh, no, H2K and, and CLG, I think, will be the winners. You think H2K will win the series? Against Origin, yes. Okay, why has that changed? Uh, because I, when we saw H2K, they were really slumping at the end of the season, but they put together three really complete games against Giants where individually they looked better, their draft looked better. They looked more like the H2K we saw at the beginning of the season rather than the end. Right. In the first matchup, Origin H2K, here's how I want to break it down, okay? So all the stats we have in the past are from the regular season. That's all the past week's shows. When you do the regular season, in general, you're going more like overall form, how someone does against the whole field. In this specific matchup, because here's the problem last week, if someone was betting on TSM or Gravity or something, is that those two teams play each other in a best of five is what's radically different from playing a best of one against one team good, one team bad. So in this scenario, when Origin play H2K, matchup-wise, which Origin players do you feel beyond just the stats? Is there anyone who should have a better matchup against like a team like H2K? I, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit hard to say because... I think Ryu and Xpeke both have sort of gone into roles that are more supportive than anything else. Uh, even though we did see Ryu playing some more Ari this past week and some more Karthus. I think I guess I guess I would go with perhaps Lulex versus Amazing. Amazing does tend to put up really good stat lines on Origin and get the team a lot of points. Uh, so I would trend in that direction. And is the logic being that Lulex isn't the sort of jungler who's going to like cause a lot of problems for a strong enemy jungler? He's a supportive yes. type guy. He, he also just doesn't get as many points anywhere close as Amazing is, which is, I mean, Amazing is above him for that reason in the salary, I think, this week. Because Lulex is actually one of the worst players to pick because of his point totals. So he just, he's, I think Lulex is just a player that probably needs to be replaced on H2K moving forward. He's probably their biggest point of weakness right now. So, yeah. So the logic is at the moment in this meta that bot lane in laning phase almost doesn't matter as long as you just vaguely survive and you get to the team fights, okay? Does that mean... There's anything to consider here between Kasing and Mithy? Because people would think of M Mithy as the super strong laning phase guy, but if Kasing gets no, to the team think, fights, I think, mana... I think Kasing roams a lot better. Uh, we saw him all over the map in the Giants series, and the laning phase can easily be avoided through lane swaps, and that way the support has more time to play on the map. So. And H2K is a good lane swap team? Uh, they, they did fine against Giants, yeah. Do you buy the rationale that Origin... Okay, so people always say this about TSM, for example, that certain TSM players always do better in the playoffs. People always say Special does better in the playoffs. Do you, do you expect, like, so, should Soaz perform better in the playoffs now than he did in the regular season? What's your sense for it? I, I don't think... I think Origin still has the same flaws. Maybe they've shored up their weaknesses, but they still have a tendency to misplay the macro game, and if they fall behind, they don't tend to be able to get back into it. Because Origin style all season has been skirmish, 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 get up some kills, transition that into objectives, and then that's how they win. They're good at snowballing when they can skirmish well early, which is their strength. But if, they do, if things don't go their way early, they continue to try to fight, even though they're behind, and then they just slowly lose the game. The comeback potential really isn't there in my opinion for origin if they start to fall behind in the early game so i don't i think h2k will be able to handle them early in at least three games of this series i do think it's going to be close i do think it's probably likely to be a five game series which means it's better for fantasy but yeah does that mean in that say okay so it sounds like on the games that origin loses you don't expect them to get like they're not going to get that many kills in theory because they're just going to lose but, comprehensively they might 
give away a lot of kills. That's the problem is Origin might pick up... Okay. I mean, all of Origin's games, why their players are so high point is because they do fight a lot. And when they're good at skirmishing, and so when that happens in the 2v2s, maybe they trade one for two. So they get one kill, but they lose two. But under the rules of Alpha Draft, kills are worth three, deaths are worth only minus one. So actually your team still makes points even when you trade like that for fantasy. So they might just fight a lot, even when behind, rack up a few yeah. kills, but more deaths, but still come ahead when it comes to the fantasy point standings. That's kind of my feeling about this. So you know that the dream team for Alpha Draft, that sadly we never got to use because they, this is before Alpha Draft's time, would have been LMQ from Summer Split last <laughs> Yes. Season. That would have been the dream, right? Because they just used to go, oh, can we get a kill? but Two kills, but give up a death deal. And again, can we do that again? Can we get three kills but give up two deaths? Deal. Like that, they would just be racking the points up every week. Okay, in a here's the problem, Monty. People are going to wonder if H2K wins as convincingly as it sounds like you think they're going to win three of the five games at least. Will they get many points on their side when they win? Uh, team Impulse. Uh, H2K. Oh, H2K. Yes, I mean they they did put up points. I just we were talking earlier that when H2K played the last series against Giants, they actually made big gains when it comes to their players moving up in terms of average points while winning. Uh, notably, Ryu and Hyarnan going pretty far up there, actually, after a lackluster end of the season. Now, I would not take Odo Omne or Lulex. Kasing, Kasing actually gets more points than both of those guys. So if you have to prioritize H2K members, you definitely want them in this order, which is Ryu, uh, Ryu Hyarnan, and then and then uh, Kasing. So over in the other one, the NA one, we have CLG versus TIP. Now you've said that CLG is going to win this. How close That's the series my, should actually be? I think less close than the Origin and H2K series. I just don't think that Gate is going to reasonably hold up against Poe Belter, who conveniently is the lowest salary in this league, uh, in the mid lane for day one. I definitely think that he's outclassed as a very new player to the LCS who's being thrown he into... He did pretty well in the first series, right? He did okay, but come on, it's fucking Dignitas, dude. Dignitas okay. was massively overrated. So here's the problem with Tip. Now, you don't think they're going to win anyway, but if someone did think they were going to win, all five of their players are within the top eight on this day. So you have to really think they're going to go ham to pick any of them because you, you're yes. just going to wreck your whole salary. You pick any one. Now, and of them, are any of them worth just, picking, you think? When we look at the statistics, maybe you take Apollo. Apollo is top 10. When it comes to points, Rush is on just on the outside of the top 10, so maybe you take Rush. But remember, Double Lift is number one. Double Lift is also very consistent. He has a low standard deviation. He gets four, over 40 points on average when CLG is winning. So he's been having, statistically, a very good season. And he's the guy that you really want to go after. And guess what? He is so cheap. He is so cheap. And even if CLG lose, Double Lift is likely to produce pretty decent points. I think it's also a problem that when you consider how expensive some of the players are for tip... I'm, if it's me and I'm making a team, I'll gamble that Niels, even if he loses the series, has a yes. couple of games where he goes ham enough that sure. it's worth it for the salary re yes. relative to Apollo. Yes. You know, Apollo you know. uh, I agreed. I think that if if when I make my draft, I will probably take Niels as a flex player just because his point, his average point total is really high. And if it, Origin wins, he's going to produce a million points. And I think that Origin isn't going to go down 0-3 or anything like that. So... I think Niels is an excellent flex pick because of how cheap he is. And because we know that if Origin wins that series, he's likely to get a, a lot of points, second only to double lift. Now, the cheapest top laner is Zion Spartan. What do you think of that? I think it's great. Guess who makes the second most points on CLG? It's, it's Zion Spartan. So... I think that that is definitely something that is looking up. Interestingly, Aframu is above Pobelter when it comes to points. So Pobelter, I, I said that CLG winning, but I would actually take Ryu here if you can afford him. But 
Pobelter's nice value if you want to put your points in something else. Or your salary, so, rather. The rationale that you used to have, which I think still holds for many people, is that if Tip can win, it's all going to be on the boy Rush. And he claims in interviews that if they give him Nidalee or Lee Sin, then he will just win the whole series himself, uh -huh. basically. Is this a possibility? Okay. Probably not. I, I think it would be an insane upset if Impulse were to win. Now, you like to cite the fact that a lot of these CLG players choke in the playoffs. Perhaps that will be a factor, perhaps they will, but I just think that with Gate instead of Xiao Weizhou, not having the established synergy and facing CLG who's been able to watch their play in a previous best of five, that they will be a, a strong favorite. Yeah. I mean, listen, we'll see how it goes, but I, I have a lot of faith in Ick Smithy to be Ick Smithy and Doublelift to kind of... <laughs> Not not pick the team up after that game one loss, you know. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of patterns there that I think a lot of, lot of deep trodden troughs there that people can sink into and wither away. Now, who do you think is the biggest steal here? I, I think it, I think it has to be either Niels or Double Lift. These are to have the top two players who, in terms of points, win. At the bottom two, I suppose double lift's tied with Yarnan, but <laughs> I think double lift is is the favorite, and he's cheaper than Apollo, and he gets more points if CLG wins. So that's a that's a steal right there by by any by any judgment. Zion's so here's an interesting really thing: cheap. when you have to pick your team, Count Logic Gaming's only three thousand four hundred. They're the cheapest of all the teams. Which is more likely to win out of the two, H2K or Count Logic Gaming? I would say CLG is, but H2K is more likely, I feel, to go to five games, which is probably why H2K is more expensive. I would rather pay the extra $200 in salary to have H2K take it to a full five-game series, especially since we know that H2K, you pick teams in Alpha Draft based off of objective control, and H2K is very good at that. You want a team who is going to get a lot of turrets and really clean out the map on a win, and I think H2K is reliable and when it comes to that. Okay, let's go over and have a look at day two day now, two. which I'm reliably informed exists. So let me just have a look. Okay. Loading, loading. Okay. It's here. Okay, so here we go, day two. So day two is, of course, going to be over in Europe. We have Fnatic versus Unicorns of Love. Yes, that's right. I said Unicorns of Love. It's a repeat of the final of last season. Oh, God. <laughs> and the other one is Team Liquid, formerly Curse, versus TSM. So let's just start with the first one, Monty. Now, you know, listen, if you want to make some bets, I'm going to tell you already, this is the beautiful one to go for because you're going to make so much money, not real money, but just value money people <laughs> who are like well unicorns of love always go to five yes. games therefore they will and the people buy unicorns of love players who don't even get points so you can just ream them like mm, delicious all these points for me do you think unicorns <laughs> of love has a chance to win the no, series absolutely not i i think they probably don't even have a chance to win a game maybe they take one game that's about all you can say unicorns of love is heavily outclassed here uh, there's a reason why all the Fnatic players are on top of their relative positions when it comes to salary. Uh, Fnatic isn't even anywhere close to the best team for fantasy points either. I think what you really want to do on this play day is bet heavily on TL because Team Liquid players get points. And I don't think that's going to be a 3-0 sweep for Team Liquid. I think it will maybe be 3-1 in favor of Team Liquid. And just their players are better value. But Fnatic, if you really want to pick Fnatic players for whatever reason, because you're crazy, pick pick uh, Reckless, I guess. Maybe you fill out your Team Liquid roster with a few Fnatic players, but I don't see any rhyme or reason to picking Unicorns of Love players. Especially because Unicorns of Love players are so expensive. Power of Evil is the second most expensive mid. He's going to get put in the trash can. That's it. So here's a question for you, Monty. 
Bjergsen is the cheapest mid laner today. And we know Bjergsen can do well in games he loses. He's on that Coco train where you can sometimes have the like five, one, two, scholar. Oh, I lost the game. Like, oh, okay, how did that work? But you can actually have good stats even in a loss. But he also gets put on Lulu now. So yeah. what are you feeling about Bjergsen here? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to be on Lulu against Team Liquid. I think what they did in, they had a targeted strategy at Gravity where basically because Alltech is the only damage source and we see that Keen likes to play cheesy champions, Bjergsen just played a bunch of champions like Oriana and Lulu with shields in the mid lane and sped up an Olaf to kill Alltech. I think that was a specific strategy against Team Liquid. I don't think they will use it. I think if they use it, they will use it maximum once and then lose and then have to switch back to Bjergsen on Victor or something like that, or Ari, right? Can so I don't Bjergsen think that's a viable strategy. this series? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think they can beat Team Liquid, but perhaps they can. Now, Bjergsen, if you want to pick a Team Liquid player, or a TSM player, he is the only one you should pick. Do not, I repeat... Do not pick anybody else. You are much better off picking Fnatic players. Bjergsen is 10th when we talk about fantasy points while winning. Okay, He is about 8 points on average behind double lift in 10th place. But here's the kicker. The other members of TSM, all four of them are in the bottom 7 of the playoffs. All four of them. It goes Wild Turtle, Santorin, uh, Dyrus and Lustboy is dead last. And remember that when I say dead last, I'm talking about when TSM wins, they don't produce points. And TSM is not likely to win this series. So maybe you go for Bjergsen. Maybe. But as a reminder, Piglet and Phoenix are both higher ranked than Bjergsen. Phoenix is $100 more in salary for an average of three more points per game. So I would take Phoenix. I would not take TSM. Now, also, for people who like to just make their picks based on what happened last, if you really like to lose money, even though Dyrus is the cheapest top laner, if you imagine that well, he did it against Gravity, he will surely carry now. Zero chance that will happen here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, zero. Part of that was like inexperienced top lane he's facing, guy who has a, easily a worse series than anyone even expected. So many things had to go that way. And also the whole strategy ended up being based around Dyrus. Who the fuck knew that was coming? It's unlikely that's going to happen again, this time. Again, you cannot, I don't think that TSM can focus a strategy around Dyrus against Team Liquid. I really believe, credit to Team Liquid, that was a very good strategy to use against Gravity, but it, I don't think it'll work against TL. So... That is a big difference. I think Dyrus, Dyrus did well last week, but I just don't think that they're going to be investing the same resources into him in the coming week. So the problem with this play day, Monty, overall, is that we've established Unicorns of Love and TSM players don't even get points when they win, yet they're yep. the two underdogs and the most expensive players are the teams we expect to win, and they get all the points. So essentially, you're picking between two. Now, someone's probably going to have to pick some lesser players still, just to fill yeah, out the me, roster. I would take Bjergsen again, because I think that TSM will win one game in this series. And I don't think that Unicorns of Love, even though Power of Evil is a better choice when we talk about statistics than Bjergsen, I don't think that he's going to win a game. And if what we about look at power, the Unicorns of Love player? Is the one that you could recommend? Yeah, well, yeah, Power of Evil. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, he's too expensive, though. If we need a cheap one to fill out the roster, who, who's, who's not terrible. I mean, they're all expensive, roughly, I guess. Vardags, yeah, I guess. Maybe Horo. Horo was better, but Horo is the second most expensive player. Hillisang is only 6,000. Yeah, Hillisang is also second to last behind Lust Boy in fantasy points. So no, please no. Don't do that. Okay. Don't better do, to pick Lust Boy even, even if you're going to do no, that. No, 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 no. No, better to pick Hillisang than Lust Boy. But not by much. Lust Boy actually being more expensive is 
sort of funny, but that's okay. He's probably, okay. again, TSM can win a game. So here's I the question. Think. For a team, are you picking Fnatic or TL? Fnatic's $400 more. TL because they'll probably play an extra game. In which they will probably get some towers and maybe a dragon or two. You don't think there's that? Like, here's the thing the Fnatic one, Unicorns love. Okay, I can grant you that. There's no way Unicorns should be able to win it. I mean, obviously, you can't, you're not psychic, but it's, not, it's unreasonable to think TSM can win the series. I, I think it's possible. TSM would have to play better objectives uh, in the late game and have better team fighting because that's sort of TL's weakness is that they're uncoordinated when it comes to engaging in the late game. Are the T- which are the TL players, if they were to lose, that are still worth having? Like, who, who gets good numbers in a loss? Oh, let me take a look. Actually, Piglet and Phoenix both do. Their standard deviation is really low between wins and losses. It's, uh, it's pretty convincing. They only average 13 fewer points. That's um, it's pretty good. I mean, all, TL is just so high in terms of points across the board that Piglet and Phoenix and, and Quas are definitely, in that order, very strong pickups. Okay, let me look. That's oh, we only have LCS for this week, right? So here's what we'll do. Let should we should we do another one v one? Yes, we absolutely should do another one v one for next we can week. Do one for each day if you want, mate. Yeah, or we we, we could do a one for each day. We could do one of the two days together, oh, upping yeah. the skill a- with a few more players. Yeah. We should do that. Do they have the two days combined. Uh, the they will. They will. Okay. The two days combined one. They they will have that. Up. Yeah. Let's let's do let's do that then. So okay. We will have well, the we should talk. We should talk about the two days combined thing though, because that's actually, okay, you know, pretty important. Uh, out of the four series, again, I think H two K versus Origin is the most likely to go to five games and produce a lot of those points. So I would tend to draft more to the H two K Origin team liquid. I would. I'm not sure who was going to win over H2K and Origin. And then I would round that out with CLG and Team Liquid players and call it a day if I was doing the... And also that's maybe, probably an insane chance of winning half of wins if you do those yeah. teams. It's yes. very unlikely you could lose because you can have so many potential point getters even in yep. lost series. Yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how I feel. There also are two tournaments up, as usual, by the way. There's the $10 Thorin Swag Jar, which is day two. So I've got the Fnatic Unicorns of Love and the TL TSM, which actually is the ideal Swag Jar one, Monty, because on that one, you're picking all the players who should definitely lose if you, <laughs> if you want to go super cheap. So you can get all of your swag in, and then if you win it, it's also it's the abomination factor, remember. It's not just out of the swag. You have to pick the players that shouldn't win. Meanwhile, yours is day one, which is the Braggart Corner, which is the one where Monty <laughs> says just to pick Origin, CLG, a combo of those with a couple of H2K players in, right? <laughs> I, would pick a, I would pick more H2K, but I think I would take Niels too. We'll have, we'll have to see. I'm going to make some teams, and we can talk about it next week. But that's my, my initial instincts on drafting for, for those days, sure. And as for LPL and Champions playoffs in Korea... Uh, not sure if we're going to have contests for that. I will tweet out if there are going to be contests for the playoffs because in, in Korea, the playoffs start on Sunday and in LPL, the con- the playoffs have already started, oh, okay. but it may be difficult to do fantasy for that because of the gauntlet system that both regions use. Well, maybe if, if it comes up in time, maybe you can just do a Facebook post or something with a couple, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. A couple of tips or something for people. So you can still get yeah. it before next week's episode. Okay. I think that's it for this week. We've done everything. Four points. That's all it takes, guys. That's all I'm saying. If you if you can get four, <laughs> if you can meet victory and defeat in the same breath, all that all that stuff. If by Richard Kipling there. So you got so that's, fucking lucky, dude. I can't even believe I'm that loving it. Shit. I'm loving it, mate. And it, like you said, I picked 100 percent losing players and teams I, I hate at once. You so much. It's fucking amazing. So anyway, 
Thanks to Offer Draft for the money and setting up great 1v1 contests like that that have accurate judgments of skill, knowledge of the game, nuance, intuition. And go to OfferDraft.com if you want. Enter our contests if you want to try and win like a thousand bucks or something, whatever is first place, $10 each. And we will see you on the next By the Numbers.